Okay, so so far on this drawing, I've actually drawn the gorilla on a normal piece of paper. I made all my mistakes on there, and then I've used transfer paper to transfer it over to this Strathmore grey paper, because I didn't want any mistakes on this paper. I didn't want to be rubbing anything out. And now what I'm doing is looking at just the darkest darks and putting them in first, because with charcoal it's quite easy to, to smudge areas and you can lose very light underdrawing a line drawing like this. So I want to make sure that I've got all the important elements in the correct places and I want them to be easily seen throughout the drawing. So I'm just using a standard charcoal pencil, a couple of good makes of Derwent and Generals but most of the decent makes are very very similar to use. So I'm using a very light touch as well. Now you can see how I've sharpened the pencil here I've actually sharpened it with a Stanley knife or a razor blade because pencil sharpeners, the ones I've used so far, are really not very good at sharpening charcoal at all. They really tend to break the charcoal nib very easily. So I'm just going to continue blocking in in the same fashion, working out from the eye and putting in those all important lines. So I'm going to speed up the camera work on you now just so you can see this, this continued process. Okay, so back to normal speed now and that process to get the drone to this stage took about eight or nine minutes so really quite fast and just blocking in the main areas of darkness and shadow so here I'm using a stump now it's a Derwent one It's made from rice paper and it's really quite soft and quite spongy when you push it and I use that when I want soft blending so you can see how the charcoal as I'm blending it now is looking darker. So that's something always to keep in mind when you put in charcoal on the, and you're going to use a blending technique. It's going to generally get darker. And you can see how it's filling in all those small marks, the pencil marks and the grain of the paper. And it's giving me that smooth fleshy look. Now I use this very similar technique when I'm doing fur and I'll use it for the under fur. So then I've got that blended appearance and I can build fur on top. So here you can see I've just cleaned the end of the stump on the paper because sometimes if you're working on a very dark area and you move into a, a slightly lighter area you've got a lot of dark charcoal on the end of the stump and then the area you're working on can become a bit darker than you want. So if you want to clean it, just rub it on a, a little bit of paper on the side. It's important to rest your hand on paper as well because charcoal is very, very easy to smudge exactly the same as pastel. So just continuing that process. When I move the paper across, I generally lift it slightly so that I'm not smudging and then put it down. It's not that important at this stage because obviously virtually all of this is going to be overdrawn with multiple layers of charcoal. This is just the underdrawing stage, just finding my way around the, the subject. So I'll speed it up again so you can continue to see this blending and smudging stage on the fleshy part of the gorilla's face. Okay, so back to normal speed and that was about four or five minutes of blending. So you can see that with the blending technique it really does speed up the process dramatically. And obviously the tone paper that I'm using, Strathmore, but virtually anyone would do, is acting as the mid-tone. So that's what's really making this drawing come alive very, very fast. It's, it's acting as the, the middle tone, the middle lightness and darkness. 
So all I'm really concentrating on is the darks at the moment. And then when I use a, a white charcoal pencil, then that's really gonna punch it forward and make it look much more realistic very, very quickly. So the one important tip I'd give you if, you, if you've got a mid-tone subject such as this, is to use the mid-tone paper, because that saves you a lot of, a hell of a lot of work. So just blending down, there's a lot of charcoal already on the end of this stump, so I haven't got to keep reapplying it or, or anything like that at all, I'm just using it. Sometimes I'm using my finger to smudge as well. And the good thing with charcoal, you can put a light tone over a dark tone. So you haven't got to worry about leaving the highlight areas. It'll go over quite easily. And that's another thing. I like it just because it's such an easy, forgiving, simple medium. I find with watercolours and coloured pencils where you've got to reserve that white area, it all gets a bit complicated and, and fiddly for myself. And I'm all for making things much much easier if possible and that's why I love charcoal and that's why I love oil painting too. So blending up the top of the head exactly the same but notice now I'm actually going in the direction of the fur, the fur growth and the, the actual flow of the haze. Because some of these marks are going to show through in the end and I'm going to do exactly the same on the chin so where I know it's going to be this is going to be a very furry area, but I know it's very dark as well. So I'm going to blend it in that fur direction, pretty much. And then it'll all make sense then when other layers go on top. The last thing you'd want to do at this stage is to actually be blending more side to side on the fur areas, because like I say, if, if bits show through, it's just going to look unnatural. I'm just blending out quite roughly. I could have used my finger as well, but the stump is keeps everything a little bit cleaner. So I'll just finish off this little stage and then I'm I'm just gonna drop in a very simple background. So because lots of the face is actually uh, moving round to the right, I'm gonna to make him pop out a little bit, the background I'm gonna do is gonna be more of a, a vertical mark. So just really simple, just going to be up and down strokes and then I know I'm going to blend this and make that go into the background. I'm leaving the area just around the, the forehead and eye area because I know that I want that to be white or much lighter tone so it really pops, pops that area forward in the drawing. So I'll just carry on filling this in and then I'll blend it. Okay, so that's the background area pretty much blended in. So you can see that the face has actually, the underdrawing has come along quite quickly. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how I add the fur technique, the highlights, and the other part of the background on the left hand side, and how I really build upon this, this gorilla drawing. See you all again real soon. Hope you've enjoyed that video. And if so, I got lots more on my YouTube channel. And don't forget, the only way not to miss out on any new videos is to click the subscribe button. On my website, I've got full length feature videos, I've got reference photo CDs, and ebooks, and also the new Easy Trace Line Art tool. So hope to see you either on my YouTube or my website, jasonmorgan.co.uk. See you all again real soon.